It's time we level up for 2023, and in this video, you're going to have the ultimate guide to radiating confidence, reinventing yourself, and glowing up from the inside and out. Together, we will rebrand for the new year and attract everything we're ready for with the right mindset. Before we go into the actual glow up and talking about everything that confidence is in regards to mindset and internal beliefs and everything about that, because that's actually the most important part, I want to talk about some of the habits that make me feel my best. As you know, you are what you put in your body, and I feel like that is a very important thing that took me a while to understand. This is not to say that what you're doing is wrong by any means if you haven't thought about this, but I remember last year I would go about my day eating whatever I wanted, sleeping at whatever time I wanted, and at some point it became too much and I felt on the outside just not good about myself I felt like sluggish I just wasn't radiating good vibes whenever I look at photos from that time I feel like even my skin looked super dull in the springtime when I made all these changes to my habits I'll link the video down below the video is actually called my spring health routine everything changed and I genuinely feel like I've never looked prettier in my life I was glowing everything from within was helping me out on the outside and it really made all the difference I decided to eat way more fruits and vegetables which is an obvious must I tried to cut back a little bit on eating super sugary foods and like candies because sugar is actually so bad for you obviously everything in moderation but I tried to eat a little bit less sweets and like unnecessary processed foods I also cut back my alcohol intake obviously alcohol especially when you're in your 20s super fun you know I'm a very social person and I feel like whenever you go out like it's everywhere I think it's important to be in your 20s if you're into that live your best life genuinely but it of course isn't actually that good for you so limiting alcohol can help in a number of ways. I also tried to limit the amount of food that I was ordering in. Like I am actually an Uber Eats addict and I still think if you want to Uber Eats that's fine but there's much healthier options like sushi or salad rolls or pho than eating like burgers every time which is what I was doing. Also drinking a frick ton of water helped me out so much because it just flushes everything out. It's good for your lymphatic drainage. Also going to the doctor seeing what kind of vitamins you need if you're deficient on anything and taking supplements for it I think is great. Hitting all the food groups getting all your protein in all of that's gonna help you glow on the outside apart from diet a big thing for me was physical exercise now everybody knows that's like vital to even your happiness like you release so much dopamine and who wouldn't want that sweating is so good for you and some of my favorite forms of exercise are weight training which I just go to the gym to do I love doing Pilates whether that be mat Pilates or reformer Pilates it honestly tones you up so much yoga is amazing I love vinyasa yoga it really strengthens up your core also running or walking Walking, walking everywhere has so many benefits getting all your steps in even doing like the 12 3 30 on the treadmill then of course having good self-care I feel like this helps with my confidence in so many ways because if I feel good on the outside I feel like I can take on the world there's such a difference between when I roll out of bed and I'm in the streets and I'm literally trying to make people not look at me versus when I did my makeup I did my hair I'm wearing a good outfit I want people to stop and look at me I think there's also a difference between your appearance and self-care self-care doesn't have to be a bath bomb or like a superficial thing. Self-care can also be taking the time to journal, reflecting on yourself, having a good sleep schedule literally makes all the difference. Less scrolling and more time spending creating. Also, if you are scrolling and you're using social media, just using it in ways that inspire you and taking in content that is going to uplift you. Also, breath work. Breathing is literally something that we do on command, but if you actually do intentional breathing, it has like so many health benefits. Literally listening to music that brings you up. Whenever I'm in the car and I'm jamming out, I just get so excited. Practicing gratitude and mindfulness also a huge one reading or practicing hobbies that you really enjoy then of course there's the actual like appearance and things that are more superficial but still make me feel amazing for me is like having a good skincare routine that I can feel confident about really targeting the areas that are actually important to me also figuring out a makeup routine that works for you because everyone has a different type of face obviously and different features that they choose to accentuate so if you see someone on the internet have this like amazing makeup routine obviously you can take product recommendations but what works for them might not work for you so really finding stuff that works for you but also having makeup free days because that also helps your skin incredibly for me I always feel put together when I have my nails done like my fingernails which I literally don't have right now and I can't wait to get done when I get my toes done and have like a nice pedicure I feel like whenever I see somebody like a girl and I'm like oh my god she just seems to have her life together it's all in the details like she'll have cute gold jewelry nice nails matching perfect clean white socks I also love a 
good at flattering hairstyle. Lastly, just having a style clothing wise that really represents you and makes you feel good when you're walking down the street. And yeah, those are some of my biggest tips for feeling good on the outside for it to translate on the inside. I wanted to start off with this because in the next clip, I am gonna do a mini glow up. I really wanna get like my hair cut, my nails done, all of the above and just feel really good going into 2022. We gotta take care of ourselves and treat ourselves like a best friend, like somebody that we really care about. of this glow up is to get a haircut now you may be wondering Fernanda I can't even see your hair what are you doing guys it snowed so much last night I'm going to have to walk to my hair appointment in the snow which is why I'm wearing this huge puffer jacket and these earmuffs but we're gonna walk all the way there once I get there I'll show you what my hair is looking like right now and then you'll see the haircut I'm getting I'm still not 100% sure what I'm gonna get I think I'm gonna do like a few inches and get curtain bangs but I definitely just need to do something because the hair is just not giving anymore let's go I'm scared <laughs> later I've gotten my hair cut and I've gotten all my nails done and it's time to show you guys the final reveal first of all look at my miniature hair here it is so short but it's so healthy and I feel like I didn't really give a good showing of it before but here are some photos of what my hair looked like before honestly I love long hair if you know about my hair journey I wore extensions basically all throughout last spring and summer and it honestly skyrocketed my confidence by like a thousand percent I had never felt more beautiful which like some might have something to say about that because it was like fake hair and I had at the time like fake lashes and like fake fake whatever but I don't care it made me feel unstoppable and ever since I got it taken out I just feel like my hair has been so thin so frail so broken and then I got my lashes off and I got my nails off and I was like wow I really just glue down in every aspect but now that I got this little haircut honestly I'd never go for short hair and even though this isn't that short it just feels so different to what I've had for the past like year which is like really long and thick hair and like it already feels so much healthier I did ask for curtain bangs while I was at the salon on, and the girl was like girl your hair is so thin I think we should focus on like rejuvenizing it first and so don't tell her this but I went home and I just kind of like got a little face razor and kind of did like little shorter pieces in the front and honestly I really like the way it looks but I heard that hair carries trauma and like negative energy so whenever you get it cut it's like clearing the energy it's a fresh beginning it's a new start and that is what we want for the new year that is exactly the energy I'm trying to embody I feel fresh I feel new I feel clean these are what my nails turned out like I have never been more in love with these they're so cool they're like silver and star and they just look amazing my nails were done by pretty with julia that's her instagram at i also got my toes i'm not gonna show you them right now but i got my toes done white and i got a gel pedicure and honestly pedicures are so underrated i feel like that's something that i really want to do in the new year more consistently because last year i wore heels so much through all these events and while i was traveling and my foot had calluses on calluses like it was disgusting it was bad and i literally went to get my toes done and the girl was like mm, you haven't gotten your toes done in a while and I was like Miss girl no I haven't is there something wrong and you know what I definitely think that there was something wrong because she was going at them but now they feel all refreshed and good and I feel like it's just the type of glow up that I needed for this winter season I just got a little matcha drink this is a grande iced matcha latte vanilla sweet cream cold foam oat base three pumps of liquid cane sugar living my best life out here let's continue to glow up
it is time we talk about confidence. What does it even mean to be confident? Because sometimes I even get confused with the own definition of it. For starters, it means to believe in yourself. It is the state of feeling certain about the truth of something. Now this can be the truth about yourself and feeling confident in your abilities, in your skills, in the way that you think about yourself, in the way that you carry yourself. And it's overall a feeling of self-assurance that arises from one's own self-appreciation. Now, don't get it twisted. This is not in an arrogant way. The difference between confidence and arrogance is that arrogant people think that they're better than other people. And the truth is you're not. You're not better than anybody else. But it's a quiet inner knowledge that you're capable and that you're the best you that you can be. And you don't feel the need to put on a show. You don't feel the need to prove to anybody else who you are, your skills, or what you're capable of doing. We are the main character in our own lives. They say a confident person does what they believe is right, even if it's unpopular. They are willing to take risks. They admit to their mistakes and they learn from them, which is like totally acceptable. They are able to accept a compliment and they are optimistic. Now, the rules for confidence. Number one, we're gonna start off with being kind to ourselves. Wherever we are right now, we're just gonna accept it for it is and not get down on ourselves, not nitpick anything. Just accept where you are right now and know that we're only gonna get better, we're only gonna improve, and we're only gonna move forward. If you want to do some shadow work, I think that this is a great time to do it. If you don't know what shadow work is, as by definition, it says that it's working with your unconscious mind to uncover parts of yourself that you repress and hide yourself from. To me, this means doing some journaling, doing some reflecting, talking to a therapist, figuring out what inside of you, you don't even realize that you do. And it could be like your not ideal qualities. I don't want to say bad qualities, but like maybe the ones that you want to improve on. I think knowing about your shadow and knowing where you fall is a very important thing for being self-aware because you can work to improve them and no one can catch you off guard because you're confident even in your flaws and you're doing the best you can to obviously try to work on them. The next thing is that you need to work on your mindset and you need to know that you are capable of doing whatever you set your mind to. You are worthy of everything that you desire and no one is better than you. If somebody else has what you want, you are also capable of having that. And also what you say to yourself is extremely important and is very powerful. We do not want to have any negative self-talk because that's only bringing us down. A confident person does not do self-deprecating jokes. In fact, people that make self-deprecating jokes, you may think that sometimes it's funny, but it's just awkward for everybody else. Like if I'm sitting in a room with someone and they're like, oh my God, I hate myself, I hate myself. I'm not going to be laughing with you. I'm going to say this is really awkward. It brings the mood down. I've probably said a self-deprecating joke before, but we're trying to be better and we're trying to be mindful of what we're saying. If we say positive things to ourselves, we start to believe it and it goes into the lucky girl syndrome, which we're going to talk about in a little bit because I am obsessed with this phenomenon of a sentence. I also want to point out that there's so many books that help with confidence and have so many tips that I highly recommend picking up some self-help books because they're so interesting. They go in a lot of depth and obviously I can give you my piece of advice or whatever, but there are like literal professionals that go with this. So I think that that's really helpful. But I also want to say that there are plenty of books. There are plenty of videos that you can watch. At the end of the day, it comes down to you putting yourself in uncomfortable situations, pushing yourself out there and practicing working on your confidence because when you do it for yourself, you know what works, you know what doesn't. That being said, the biggest thing that helped my confidence is getting out of my comfort zone. This all started even when I started my YouTube channel. That was something that I was so nervous about doing and I was really shy at the time actually, but for some reason, in my case, talking to a camera, I could be completely myself with even if in public or at school I was being kind of shy or whatever. And then when my channel started to blow up and people liked me for being me that completely boosted my confidence because I was literally thinking to myself I am getting love I'm getting likes I'm getting views whatever for being me therefore why would I be afraid to be me that's what people like to see if I hadn't gone out of my comfort zone I wouldn't even realize that that is something that I would have been confident in meeting new people is great because you get to see and learn about different opinions how different people communicate being in situations that you're a little bit unsure of you get to see how you react to that and you have confidence in your own decisions and even how you treat other people as well and also you get to see and meet different personalities that you don't resonate and you get to see okay I'm definitely not like that and it kind of like molds your opinion of yourself which if we go back to like what the definition of confidence even means it means being sure of yourself and all of that so I feel like everything ties in together I think another thing that really helps with confidence is practicing something and being really great at it do a hobby do a sport do something that you can be good at and like grow to be good at it you can practice it the reason why I say this is because when you are good at something it naturally builds up your confidence and your self-esteem which gives you a stronger sense of self. In my case, I developed this through starting my YouTube channel and gaining success through that, learning how to make good videos and become comfortable on the internet. I became so confident in my videos that when people would ask me if I was embarrassed about them, even when I first started, I never felt ashamed because I personally thought so highly of them. Think about things in your life as simply facts. I saw a girl on TikTok say this and I completely agree with her. She goes, I think I'm hot and that's just the facts. Nobody can sway my opinion about that because it's just the facts. Think about all these things that are facts about yourself. They are factual. 
even if you have to lie to yourself because your brain doesn't know the difference. They just know that you're saying it and you start to believe it. Examples for using this technique in positive affirmations would be, it is a fact that I am so beautiful. It is a fact that I'm really smart. It is a fact that I'm really creative. It is a fact that I am a good friend. If you know these facts about yourself, no one can make you think otherwise. Find the strengths that you're good at. Maybe this can be a list of your achievements, personal skills, aspects of yourself that you like, you're proud of, and you know you're good at. If you have this list, keep it in your 2023 journal and go into this new year, maybe focusing on those skills, highlighting those skills, carrying them with you and being confident in those things, I think will make a big difference. And also if you are making this list and you don't really know what you're good at or you don't really have any passions, try out a bunch of different hobbies. Next step that I feel like we've been talking about throughout this whole little spiel, but it is faking it till you make it. A big thing with this is your body language and how you carry yourself. How you carry yourself and the way that you deliver something is almost more important than what you're actually saying. Good posture, having your shoulders back, looking at people in the eyes, that is a big one. That has changed the game for me when I'm out there socializing. Look at people in the eyes. Don't try to like look at the feed and like make yourself unknown because you don't look confident like that. But when you go with a strong introduction, they're gonna be like, oh my God, she's so confident. It makes a really big difference when you go out into the world. And I feel like this also can be proven when if I go to the gym, for example, and I like don't get ready, I am literally looking at the floor. I am trying not to talk to anybody. Kind of like this, genuinely, nobody talks to me. When I'm going out with my friends or like in New York, when I was going to fashion shows or after parties or in rooms where I want people to like take note of myself, I am having good posture. I constantly am thinking about myself. Like say I'm sitting down in a room with someone and I'm sitting like this. I think to myself, oh my God, Fernanda, you are giving like shy vibes. Like open yourself up, take up room, put your opinion in there, look at people in the eyes. And I'm telling you when I was walking through those places, there was people literally turning around and being like, oh my God, like who is that? They come up to me and ask me what my name is. They are talking to me. They're looking at me in the eyes. It is not a lie. I'm not trying to sound conceited, whatever. It's, it's completely different. The way that you think about yourself and how you carry yourself makes such a difference in the energy of the room. And not only that, but the way people treat you. How you feel about yourself and how you show up in this world will really reflect the type of interactions and opportunities you get in return. And also when you're walking into a room and you're projecting your energy out, people are drawn to it. You are radiating great vibes. They want to know who you are and they're going to say, oh my God, that girl looks like somebody. Like, who is she? I want to go talk to her. Also, you need to work on a growth mindset. There's two different types of mindsets you can have, a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. A growth mindset is where you are optimistic, you wanna try new things, you accept that failure is just an opportunity to grow and that it's okay if you fail. If you practice it and you try to learn, you can do whatever you want. That feedback is constructive, that you are just willing to learn. That is so different than having a fixed mindset where if you fail at something, you're like, oh, well, never gonna try it again, never gonna do it again, yes, it's not for me. Being jealous of them, comparing yourself to them, no. None of that in 2023. We are only going to strive to do better and take our failures as an opportunity to grow. And also, I think another tip with this is working on positive relationships, having people around you that lift you up and agree with you, hype you up, make you feel good about yourself is going to ultimately help you as well because not only are you feeding yourself this, but you're hanging around with people that believe in you, that amplify your energy. Because if I'm thinking like, oh my God, we're the best people here. We look so good. We're gonna get all these opportunities. And the girl beside me is like, oh, we're not. This sucks. Let's go home. Like, I hate this. I'm, I'm gonna be like, girl, bye. I can't hang with you. <laughs> like, this is not helping me. But I would just try to stay away from those people because you only want people that are bringing you up. A little different than all the rest. A quite old fashioned where I had sometimes played chess. And when I'm I'm looking for that vintage flame But all complexions that I adore So hard to find these seem impossible to I cannot even move my face right now Dream of
a bathing suit, of course. I'm using a bath bomb, which I haven't done in a really long time, and I feel luxurious, and that's how we should be feeling every step of the way. I also made myself a little concoction, which I've made in a past video, but this is one of my favorite things. It is water with chlorophyll and chia seeds. It has so many benefits. I also made myself a little yogurt parfait with honey Greek yogurt, strawberries, blueberries, and granola. Okay, we've got the last and final step to do, and this is one of the most exciting things that I've been looking forward to making for a while now, and it is a Notion page where we come up with our ideal self with Pinterest pictures and basically a whole bunch of affirmations to create an alter ego. We're gonna call it the Marilyn Monroe effect because I like that term. It says on here that the Marilyn Monroe effect is more than the classic fake it till you make it, but it is acting as if they were as confident as they would like to feel they were. Basically, Marilyn Monroe was walking on the street and she was getting recognized by nobody. She was just walking around whatever and then she decided to turn it on and you may be like what does she mean turn it on but she meant she was turning on her main character star power energy and all of a sudden she started walking with confidence walking like she was that girl and everybody was stopping looking at her being like oh my god she's beautiful and basically it was just changing that little inner knowledge that little inner dialogue of like yeah I'm her this is me or we can name it becoming her so basically you have your own version of that girl it's gonna be like what my alter ego would dress like what my alter ego acts like what my alter ego's attitude is like once I have it all down it's gonna be my energy for 2023 there is a life I lead in this city hurrying to cut my teeth can take what I need. So here's what my final page looked like in all different sections and aspects of my life. You can definitely change this and add in sections such as home, style, and other qualities. These are affirmations that I hope to embody in 2023. And something in particular I want to talk about is the lucky girl syndrome. Do you carry me like I am whole again? Wait, hold on. It is said that the lucky girl syndrome is also known as the law of assumption. It is basically thinking and acting in a positive manner for things to come to you. We've basically been talking about this mindset throughout the entire video, but I just really like the way this sentence is worded and I feel like it's definitely the energy for the new year, so I just wanted to say it one more time. It's the idea that by keeping an optimistic and lucky mindset, everything will work out for you. What we assume is true will become true. Anyways, that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Make sure you stick around for part three of the Level Up series and I will talk to you guys very shortly. I love you. Feeling is all 